All right. Let us say hello once again to a man who last time he was on the show, he opened up a lot of eyes in regards to his journey into the sport of mixed martial arts, into a big fight with Kevin Lee, which he won at UFC Vegas 35. So we are happy to welcome back D-Rod, Daniel Rodriguez, who is live from inside the UFC Apex right now. How about that? How are you, sir? In the Apex right now, you know, we got the, you know, just out here. (laughs) Here at the office, you know what I mean? Another day in the office. Yes, we are just, uh, just as we record, just hours away from Dana White's Contender Series kicking off inside the, the Apex. But it's good to have you back, man. Congratulations on the big win over Kevin Lee. And when we spoke before that fight, you felt like a victory would give you a nice boost in the respect department, in the rankings. You're now officially a top 15 guy at 170 pounds. Do you feel like that win has, has given you that initial boost that you expected it to? Oh yeah, man. I definitely, um, you know, feel, feel, uh, feel that, you know, definitely if I see my name in the rankings, you know, uh, that, that, that win helped, you know, me crack the top 15 in the world's weight division. You know, that was one of the main reasons why I took the fight is for that reason itself. You know, the fight was on two weeks notice, big name, Kevin Lee. I knew that, you know, coming in there, you know, there was going to be a lot of eyes, you know, Kevin Lee stepping up to the welterweight, welterweight division. And, uh, you know, I kind of, I, I felt, uh, you know, that was, a, that was, a, that was a, the best decision I've ever made. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he came out pretty strong. He came out, like, on fire. And then, you know, you kind of weathered the storm and then it, it turned into your pace and you sort of took over that fight. Did you kind of expect that to happen? Like, him come out a little bit on fire and then, you just slowing down the pace and then sort of turning yep. it into the D-Rod show? Yeah, that was no surprise coming in there. We knew that, uh, you know, even my coaches, the coaches were like, uh, you know, because we we, we train in the same city. You know, we're out here in Las Vegas. I hear a lot of things. I'm around other fighters that train with him, other coaches, you know, and a lot of people, it's, it's not, it's no secret that Kevin Lee comes out hard in the first round, you know, and uh, we expected that coming in, him to come out, come out strong and, and, you know, potentially, you know, get, get into some grappling and exchanges with them, you know, and I'd have to like, I'd have to, you know, work on my takedown defense coming in, you know, and, uh, but we knew that get coming out of the second round, I was like, okay, he just, you know, spent a lot of energy, you know, he hadn't fought in a long time, you know, I've been back to back to back fights, you know, so I haven't lost a feeling. I, and I like, you know, I got that muscle memory when it comes to, you know, pushing my body in these fights, you know, and, and, and yeah, man, coming out of that, that, that first round, I knew he was going to slow down in the second. And I knew as long as, as long as, as the fight kept going on, he was going to get more tired and more tired and more tired, you know? Uh, yeah. And we knew he was be carrying, he'd be carrying around a lot more weight. We knew his cardio might slow down because he doesn't have to like do all the cardio necessary to, to lose ex- these extra pounds, you know? But, uh, you know, on my end, too, um, I, I had I had stayed in shape for the most part after my last fight. You know, this fight, I kind of, like, have been, you know, um, taking a little rest, you know, because, as you, as you all know, I got a surgery. But, yeah, as long as as long as long we stood in that, that fight, the longer it went, the more it, it turned into the D-Rod show. Yeah, I, I don't know if you if you pay attention to, like, the outside noise and stuff like that and, like, when, when Kevin's doing interviews with other outlets and, and things like that. But one of the things I found interesting was that he, he did have a lot of respect for you. He had heard about you, but he was already putting himself as a top five welterweight and talking about fights with Kamara Usman and, and guys like that. Like, were you, were you hearing any rumblings about that? Were, were, did, did you see those interviews? And if so, how did you feel about that? Did you feel like you were perhaps being overlooked heading into this fight? Yeah, I- me feel like he was looking past me in this fight um i did appreciate the respect you know he's one of the first fighters to like show me that kind of respect and um you know kind of like he surprised me with some of the stuff that he took into consideration with the you know all the jail fights and street fights and stuff and yeah it is relative it's extremely relative to 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 one of the reasons why i look so calm in there everybody always tells me man he looks so so calm and stuff like that it's like something this is something that i'm truly comfortable with you know and uh, it's fun to me and i love it and um he's one of the only fighters to ever put that experience in into it you know so um coming in coming in i definitely felt that he was looking past me by already considering himself a top welterweight when you know i've been working 
you know, since I've been since I've been signed in the UFC, I've been working hard and consistently to try to get to where I'm at today. So um, I definitely didn't feel, you know, uh, he'd, he'd be able to to stand with me as far as striking. But I felt like I wanted to test myself, you know, by taking on a solid wrestler like Kevin Lee, you know, especially with him having this success in the lightweight division, you know, um, I just wanted to test myself, man. And, uh, you know, I did, I did see some of those interviews where he gave me the respect. It was dope. Do you feel like there was a weight lifted off your shoulders when they announced you the winner? Because I, I remember that interview. We, we talk about it over at MMA fighting a lot because you were, you were fired up. You had, a. Uh, I think you. I, I think you may have broken the record for the uh, use of the word of the f word throughout a, a conversation. So we talk about that a lot. Uh, but you seem like much more. I mean, you definitely seem like much more relaxed and at ease right now because the fight is over. You get a little bit of a break. You're, you know, you get to rest a little bit. You don't have to worry about a huge fight coming up. Like, did you feel a nice little release, weight lifted off your shoulders when you were declared oh, the winner of that fight? Yeah, that I felt. You know accomplished you know i felt like you know this is it like i'm finally gonna get the recognition i deserve as well like i felt good getting my hand raised you know because he was a more popular fighter i left it in the hands of the judges i'm like oh man you know like please don't fucking rob me you know because <laughs> you know when i when, when i get you know when i get taken down i'm like damn in my opinion that's major points you know so he was able to take me down, you know, a couple of times in that fight. And the first round, I, you know, I feel like he held me down long enough to possibly take the round, you know. So coming into that second round, I was like, fuck, he held me down for like two seconds. So, I mean, for two minutes, so I'm like, damn, I got to make up for that. So that's why going into the second round, I came out so hard. And even in the third round, you know, I, I felt I had, I had rocked him at the end of the second round. So going into the third, I was like, I was fully confident. And that, that's where I'm a problem. That's where I'm a problem. Once I start to get confident and comfortable in there, then then I just start letting it fly. You know, it becomes it becomes even more fun. I get even more amped up because I'm winning this fight, you know, and I feel like I felt I felt a huge weight lifted off my soldiers because soldiers because uh you know it was Kevin Lee. I uh, had only did it on two weeks' notice. And uh, you know, there was just a lot of buildup to this fight for the first time, you know. And um you know, I'm just, I'm just, I feel excited for, for what's next. Huh? So how is the hand now? You, you're at the apex, you're, you're, you're at the PI. I assume there's a reason for that. So how is the hand? And, uh, cause we saw the medical suspensions, obviously, how is everything going in, in terms of injuries and how you're feeling after that fight? Uh, man, I just got the stitches taken out today. Uh, we got some, some butter, some, you know, some stair strips on it right now. Um, you know, I still can't still can't make a fist, but you know, I'm slowly getting back into it. You know, just I was messing around in my garage yesterday. You know, hitting hitting the cobra bag and double end bag, and just working on my jab and footwork. And, you know, um, I'm not, I'm not even sure how long the suspension is. I'm suspension is. I'm hoping it's like somewhere around two or three months because I feel like, you know, the, they say the heel time's two months and. Um, you know, I'm like, I want to give myself another month and a half, maybe after I can start hitting it, hitting on it, you know, and, uh, you know, because just just so I can start working on other stuff, too, besides just hitting, punching, like, you know, I can work on my grip strength again. So that's things that I'm taking into consideration. But, um, you know, I'm hoping I get back in there, like, you know, uh, from the surgery to like I fight again, I'm thinking like four months, you know, like just January, I'm, February ish. Yeah, like. Five, like February would be ideal. January, I'd be like, you know, I'd have to get started now. You know, it's like I could still run and shit. You know, I've always been like a runner. You know, I could still do cardio stuff. You know, I, I'm, I'm over here at Apex. There's ways to work around the injury to in order to keep myself in shape. So that way, when it comes time, I'm not like completely out of shape, you know? So one of the reasons that I'm glad you're here is I was told heading into this conversation, and I know you still have some time. You're hoping maybe January, February. Uh, you had some things to get off your chest. You had some things to say to your fellow welterweights, your fellow 170 years, most notably the other fighters ranked inside the top 15. So I'm not sure if that is exactly the case, but that's how the, this interview was kind of pitched to me. So uh, what do you want to say? Like what, 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 what's on your mind when it comes to the rest of your welterweights, especially those ranked above you right now? Oh man. 
really, really all of those fights are exciting fights, you know, and I feel like uh, matchmakers and, and Dana know that now, uh, you know, but there's just, it's really, it's really like, you know, I'm willing to fight all, you know, but uh, since the surgery, I got offered actually uh, to fight Neil Magny, you know, in December. And uh, that that's a great fight, you know. Um, he's the number eight ranked guy, you know, and it's just, it's, it's a good ass feeling to, to be presented these fucking names, dude. Honestly, I was like, what? They want me to fight fucking Neil Magny. He's like eight, number eight, you know, and I was asking for Muhammad and, you know, I'll fight, you know, Jeff Neal or fucking uh, Santiago, the Argentinian dude. Ponsonibio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to say his name. You know, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> but yeah, um, um, really, really, like, as soon as this injury is over, you know, um, you know, I'm definitely going to, uh, you know, just, just I'm, I'm going to grind my ass off to then and, and stay ready. So any of these fights coming up, or it's any of these of these of these guys, you know, this is my plan. This is my plan. I'm gonna stay in shape, you know, like I always do. And when it comes time, and when one of these guys falls out of their fight, whatever, or, or something happens, you know, I'm gonna be there to step it up. So just know that 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 if you're fight if you're fighting in the top rank welterweight division, and when your fight falls out, you're gonna fight me. Just know that shit. Yeah, me too. Put the like the bat signal, just put the D rod signal up in the sky and you'll come running. Here we go, flying right yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. If it were up to you, like it'd be January, February, whenever you're ready to come back, they said, Daniel, top 15 guy, you know, someone is you mentioned Muhammad. That's the guy you sort of alluded to when you when you got the win over Kevin Lee. Is that like the top choice for you, fighting Bilal, or is it just kind of open season for whoever wants it right now? Hey yo. Like it's it's open season. I mean, I mean, I, I've never been. I've always been the the type of person to just say, yeah, let's let's do this to whoever whoever mm-hmm. uh, you know whoever that whoever wants whoever needs me to step up, you know, or or uh, anybody. But yeah, Mohammed would be great. I'm I'm down to fight uh uh Neil Magny or any of these top ten guys, you know. But I know I know realistically it, it won't be like you know the top five or less until like you know I get you know, in the top 10, you know, but um, really open season on all the, on the whole welterweight division, you know, um, I just want to fight, you know, uh, I just, I love fighting, you know, I love making money even more. So, you know, whoever needs, to, needs me to step up, you know, and fight, whether in the rankings or not, I'm going to take a fight, you know? So, uh, you know, preferably it'll be in the top, you know, top 10, top 15 guys, you know, I, just, I I've been climbing up the, the rankings my whole career and uh you know I just plan to keep on doing that I feel like I'm definitely a threat in the division you know I feel like from this point on it's gonna be a lot of eyes on me especially especially uh, the rest of the welterweight division coming in you know and I'm not gonna take too much time off I mean like this injury is just a minor setback and um you know I'm just I'm just I'm just confident in my career right now and where it's headed and and you know I'm carrying my the momentum of my last fight into the next fight you know, and, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I know, I know for a fact that, that I'm not definitely on everybody's radar, you know, and I'm a dangerous fight for anybody. You know, I just showed a lot in this last fight that, you know, um, you know, I could handle one of these high level grapplers, you know, so, so, uh, you know, it, leaves me, it gives me more confidence to do what I do and work my game when it comes time. But, but yeah, all these other guys, you know, y'all, y'all in trouble because I'm coming. I mean, injuries obviously suck and you don't want to deal with it and surgeries and all that, but in a weird way, is, is this, is the timing like actually kind of perfect for a break for you? Because you've been nonstop for the last like year, year and a half, man. Like in the last time we spoke, you were hoping maybe let's take a little breather. Like let's get like an actual fight camp in here. And I mean, it's not ideal being in the situation you're in right now, but you get a little bit of a breather. You haven't really been able to say that for a while. No, man, I haven't. And, uh, you know, uh, it's been, I've been busy. I've been busy. And, um, you know, I'm on the, I'm on the quick rise, man. I feel like I just last fight, I just put myself in a position to, to now, now it's, it's looking way different. My next fight is going to be big. You know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping my next fight is, is a major fight. You know, um, really ultimately it's up to the, it's up to the, um, UFC matchmakers to, to, you know, to put on a great show. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, 
I'm excited for, for, for what's next, you know, um, you know, this injury is like a little minor setback, but it can be a blessing in, this, in disguise. You know, I, I'm, I could start working on other things in my game. You know, I could have even more cardio next time you see me because I was working my cardio so much more. My jab's going to be even fucking faster this time because I've been working my nothing but my jab and less power my punches or my footwork. I'm going to be dancing around these fools, you know. Is you never know what to expect out of me because I've always been the person that's going to work around the injury. You know, I'm always I'm always going through some kind of injury or some minor setback uh, within a fight camp. Like for the Perry camp, I tore my pec, you know, and uh, I, I worked around that. I was throwing nothing but power punches. I couldn't work my jab very much, so I couldn't throw power on my on my lead hand. But you know, I was able to work around it, you know, and in, in that fight, my job was super fast. And my kicks were coming out more because I was focusing a lot more on my kicks. So that could be the same, you know, the same for the next time I'm getting ready for a fight. I'm just constantly working around these injuries. Last thing, um, our last conversation, a lot of people reacted and hit me up and because they weren't really aware of your story and the struggles that you overcame and the things that you've been through to, to get to where you're at today. And you talked about it being so surreal that you're getting offers to fight freaking Neil Magny and top 10, 170 pounders in the world. You're starting to reach a lot of people, Daniel. And a lot of people have reached out and they, they, you're, you're out here inspiring, Daniel. You're out here inspiring people. Like, what does that mean to you? Did you think you'd be in this position like five years ago? Um, I didn't think, I didn't think it, it happens this fast you know i knew i know like it's not easy being getting into the ufc you know it's uh you know obviously you gotta climb up the ranks you gotta win you gotta you gotta you gotta fucking stand out you gotta be something different you gotta be special you know and um you know it's a good ass feeling to like have so many people like you know uh look up to me uh, I remember when I started, I was just a fan, you know, and I love, I, I was so, so much of a fan. I became a fighter, you know, um, you know, it's definitely a, a good feeling. Uh, uh, I definitely feel, you know, uh, all the fan, the fan support, you know, it's dope. I have some dope ass fans and, um, um, yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling, man. Uh, a lot of people look up to me and, and it's just, it's just an amazing feeling. It's crazy. Very happy for you, man. Very happy to see you crack in the top 15. Well-deserved and big fights coming your way and glad to see that you're healing up nicely and that you're being it. You're able to work around the injury and continue to improve during your time off. But uh, always a pleasure, Daniel. Congratulations on the big win over Kevin Lee and looking forward to a, a very busy and a very big 2022 for you, my man. Enjoy the holidays and we'll talk soon. Thank you, brother.